Thank you everyone for having us here in Dubai. Uh, my name is Rami Tamimi. I am a PhD student at The Ohio State University under the direction of Dr. Charles Toth. I'm accompanied by uh, two of my colleagues that helped me on this project, Dr. Barish Suleimanu and Dr. Abdul Gawad Al Ashri from Turkey and Egypt, respectively. Um, and we worked on a project where we compared the point cloud that was produced from two LiDAR sensors, one from inertial labs called the Recipe Gen 1 M2X, and the second from DJI, which is the Zenmuse L2 sensor. And we used two different platforms um, for UAS in order to test different varieties of terrain conditions. The theme of the session is 3D sensing for smart cities. And so we talk about smart cities a lot, but what does the infrastructure look like? What would we use a smart city for, right? And the biggest aspect of it can come from self-driving vehicles, creating digital twins, managing different assets like your roads, your street signs, you know, different infrastructure that, you know, could affect the safety of those who use that city, as well as environmental monitoring. So if we have any kind of natural disaster, how can we assess it using a smart city might be a very efficient way to do that. And so relying on the data that comes out of our equipment in order to produce highly accurate models is key when we go ahead and digitize our ecosystem. So my entire research has always been focused on assessing accuracy, ensuring the data that we collect is correct, and creating several different uh, data sets in order to validate that accuracy. So the motivation behind this research is to see, you know, the top brands, the ones that constantly promote in the, you know, in the industry, are they good? And do they give us the results that they're marketed to tell us they give? A lot of the research that I have, you know, taken a look at and tried to base my work off of shows that, okay, we have a LiDAR sensor, here are the specifications from the, you know, manufacturer, and now we measured it and we compare the results of our, you know, metadata to what the manufacturer gave us. But there's not too much that actually assesses UAS LiDAR. Just because UAS LiDAR is not as prevalent as, you know, photogrammetry or or, you know, a terrestrial LiDAR has been. So it's definitely a new concept, especially when it comes to utilizing it for creating a highly accurate model that we can say is like survey grade. Additionally, you know, people tend to test one sensor, compare it to maybe another, you know, like ground truth model, uh, but testing different sensors, you know, having different platforms, trying different mixtures of, uh, of these sensors with their platforms has also been unexplored. This has really been the motivation for our research and hoping that we can find, you know, very accurate setups that we can use in order to build the infrastructure for a smart city. And so the two that we are going to be using are the recipe from Inertial Labs. This was put on a wing truck. Uh, this is a fixed wing PPK drone. The second was the DJI Zenmuse L2. This was put on a quadcopter, uh, which has RTK. It's the M350 uh, RTK. But we did run PPK on it. And we also have a separate data set uh, that we ran ground control points on. The idea is to fly a pretty unique site where actually we have multiple environments that we can test. One environment is just an open air, one is urban, and one is forced. We want to test the sustainability of these sensors, how reliable are they, how well do they integrate with other components of their drone, and then how much ground control do I actually need, right? Is it necessary to have ground control? Does it actually improve the data in any way? And so we're going to be putting all of these questions into an experiment and then testing the root mean square error of the data that we collect through a ground truth data set. So a little bit more about the sensors that we used. So um, the first one on the left is the recipe uh, M2X it has a maximum range of 300 meters. So you can really fly high. Actually, in the United States, you can't even fly that high. So uh, definitely going to get enough coverage for when we're flying. Accuracy, they are claiming that you can get one centimeter of accuracy per 150 meters. It has three returns. So that's really good for measuring, you know, in forested areas or anywhere where you might have obstructions that you can get three returns. Points per return are 640,000 points. That seems like a lot, but you have to remember that this is only going to happen if your 360 degree field of view is not obstructed. So in the case of our drone, which we'll see at the setup in just a minute, we are obstructing beyond 50% of the sensor just because of the way it's nestled into the fixed wing drone. The L2 has an even higher range of 450 meters. They're claiming for two centimeters of accuracy of every 150 meters, five returns. So you get a little bit more data. Uh, not quite as much, uh, 240,000, but again, pretty similar in terms of the beam deviation. However, um, you do have a much heavier sensor. It's twice as much weight as 
the recipe. The study area is a small town in uh, Metro Detroit called Utica. We collected about 91 hectares of uh, data. All the landscapes that we're trying to test here are available in this site, so we don't have to keep collecting different data sets. So the flight parameters, uh, this is the wing truck. And we flew this at 300 feet above ground level, which is about 91 meters. The reason we had to fly it at this altitude is the battery, uh, when it runs out, it ends the project and you have your data set. So there is no way to, I guess, stop it and then recalibrate and then fly again. You would have to basically create a new data set and then basically merge those two data sets in post-processing. So we didn't want to include that, you know, just another way to get more error. So we left it out. We said, let's just fly it at an altitude um, where we would get all the data we would need. Because of this, we had no control over the speed. So the flight speed was at 27 and a half kilometers per hour. Overlap was 40%. Flight time was 20 minutes. Uh, when it comes to the correction method, we had to utilize PPK. And so we set a uh, point using network RTK with a GNSS receiver. And then we used the Nimlet Reach RS2 as a base station. So it was collecting raw data while we were flying. And then and we updated the trajectories of the drone using uh, that base station data. Processing took place on PC Master Pro. This is a software that is provided by Inertial Labs, and it does not support ground control points. We collected about 8 million points, which is a density of about 70 points per square meter. So here's the uh, M3. 50 RTK with the L2. We did fly this a little bit lower. This was at 79.2 meters, so about 10 meters lower. And it did fly at a slower speed of 18 kilometers per hour. Same 40% overlap, same 20 minutes of flight time. We had five returns, so we had a little bit more data uh, because our returns were stronger. The correction method, we started with RTK. It has RTK capabilities, so we connected to our local cores network. And then afterwards, I used the same process with setting up the base and I updated the trajectories of the RTK data. Not gonna be as drastic of a change in the trajectories when you have RTK already, but hey, maybe the RTK lost its fix and you were floating for a bit. So now you've corrected that bit of uh, you know ambiguity when it comes to the accuracy of your trajectories. Process the data in DJI Terra, which does support vertical control points. There was 315 million points, so a density of 418 points per square meter. So when it comes to the ground truthing, we set a control network using GNSS on network RTK, and we set 125 points. Now, mind you, uh, we did this in three different areas, and there's a little bit of an imbalance in these points. What I mean by that is this is the open field that we are going to be testing as the first environment. There's over 90 points, I would say, here, and they're really clustered together, and it's kind of unnecessary for them to be like this. It would have been wiser to spread those 100 and 25 points out across the three sites. But nonetheless, that's what we're working with here. Um, so that is the data that we collected for ground truthing on the open air area. Next, we have an urban area. So this is just, you know, local homes, buildings, uh, nothing, no, no skyscrapers. It's not like a big city. It's a small town. It's not open, but it's not forested like crazy. You can still see if you did photogrammetry, you'd be able to see the roads. And then finally, there is a creek in the back with heavy vegetation. So we did go in there and survey uh, a number of points. Um, I want to say there was like 10 to 15 points between those two environments. So still a decent amount that we could use to validate our point cloud. So these are the three data sets that we generated. The first is the M350 with the L2, PPK, no ground control points. The second is the M350 with the L2, PPK, with ground control points. And if you take, look closely here, you can see we've got little triangles um, of the approximate location of where those ground control points were. Again, this is vertical only. And this is not horizontal. And there was about 10 of them that we included in the solution uh, when we generated that second version of the L2 data set. And then that third one is the wing chair with the recipe. And so the way we analyzed it is we wanted to take a look at the, the noise, you know, the, the change in surfaces. If we were to overlay these point clouds together, would we see shifting? That to us was like the indicator of, okay, like we have decent uh, data set that we can actually compare the accuracies of themselves to each other. In addition to that, we would then compare them to the ground control points. So we wanted to start with comparing the data sets to each other, seeing if there was misalignment, um, and then we'd figure out, okay, what's the absolute accuracy uh, to our ground control points. So this would give us basically the root mean square error, and then that would give us our relative and absolute accuracy. So we'll start with like the reconstruction of features, right? Because that's a pretty important one. Mind you, we did fly the recipe with the wing tra about 10 meters higher. So I have to give some forgiveness for, you know, missing data. But what we did find was that it was missing quite a bit of data. So this is a power line that was on the ground. 
The L2 is on top, it's constructed well, we can actually see where all the power lines are. And this is an application that many people use it for. Whenever we're doing power line surveys, we'll utilize you know, UAS LiDAR in order to collect that data, in order to figure out where those lines are exactly. So Recipe struggled with this one and it wasn't able to capture the fine detail of those uh, power lines. Next, let's look at the forested area. So here we find that L2 and Recipe match in certain areas. Even the non-GCP and the GCP data match pretty good. My guess is, you know, the calculations between the third and the fifth returns of these sensors came out the same. But when it came to this area over here, recipe did come up a bit higher than the L2 uh, did. And the final visual here I want to give you is a rooftop. So this is in the urban area. This is on top of somebody's house. Uh, again, data is landing relatively close to each other, but there's a lot more noise with the L2 with no GCP and the recipe, recipe being a lot more than even the uh, the two L2 data sets. In our mind, you know, the, there really shouldn't be a difference in noise between the L2 with GCP and the L2 without GCP. Perhaps there's some algorithms that we don't know about in DJI Terra, um, but that's what we found at least with this experiment. So let's look at numbers because we can look at point clouds all day, but numbers really are what give us uh, true value. In the open air experiment, we found, this is again, vertical differences of 0 0.06 meters, so six centimeters in the L2 with no GCPs. We found four centimeters with the GCPs, and then we found 10 centimeters with the recipe. In the urban area, this is when we start to see the L2 struggle. The L2 with no GCPs had nine centimeters, with GCPs had five centimeters, recipe had two centimeters. And then L2, no GCPs on the forested areas, we expect this to be the worst. This had 22 centimeters, uh, with GCPs had about the same 19 centimeters, and then recipe was right there with them at 27 centimeters. We found that these sensors are quite comparable to each other. They are giving us similar results where you can expect a few centimeters in open air and some urban areas, and once you get into the forested areas, you're getting into the decimeter level. These are cheaper sensors. These are cheaper drones. This is not airborne LIDAR. Um, and we didn't, some of these without any ground control points. So the use of ground control points did improve the data. So we would definitely recommend anyone to continue to use that if you're able to put a spread and then just use it to help adjust the vertical component of your point clouds. Some future work, and some of this we've started to do, is deploying a terrestrial laser scanner to do the ground truth thing, especially in the forested areas. We actually did this in the winter. So the, the, the data set has a lot of snow in it. So I'm not very happy with it. Definitely not a problem here in Dubai. But for us, you know, we wanted to do this a little bit better. We wanted to improve on the ground truthing data set so that we can really compare apples to apples. So we actually have two point clouds that we can compare to each other. We're not sure if flying fixed wing had to do with any of the errors with the recipe. So definitely using the M350 and getting a recipe that has the mount that will go on to the M350 would give this a more fair advantage because then we can actually fly the same parameters. That way we're not restricted with the wing truss parameters uh, because it's a fixed wing aircraft. Conducting this multiple times, trying this with leaves on, leaves off, you know, really repeating this process over and over again, just to see, you know, hey, what the kind of conditions uh, impact this type of data work. And then finally, if we can get horizontal ground control points um, that would be great it'll definitely push toward giving us more accurate data and the overall mission for giving us data sets that we can use in smart cities so i want to thank the organizers of gsw25 isprs and the Mohammed bin rashid space center thank you to wingtra dji enterprise inertial labs and imlet for providing us with equipment and softwares and then finally dr Sleimanu, dr al ashri and dr toth our advisor for helping us with this project so, thank you guys